Good afternoon. My name is Peter Buckley. I'm head of sales with Cambridge Technology and with me is Shaquille Ahmed, who is our head of cloud operations and welcome to our webinar on AWS systems manager and hybrid cloud management at scale. <clears throat> Again, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to uh, everybody who's attending. I'd like to take just a quick minute and tell you a little bit about uh, Cambridge Technology. We were founded in 1999. We are an IT consulting services company, and we uh, provide a broad spectrum of IT services, everything including application uh, services, cloud migrations, transformations, and managed services, big data or data and analytics, DevOps, AI, machine learning, and IoT. Uh, we have about 450 employees globally. Uh, in the United States, we have offices in Atlanta, Charlotte, Louisville, uh, Topeka, and Kansas City, or Topeka and San Diego. We're a, uh, an Amazon partner. We're Oracle, Tableau, among others. We're also uh, Google Cloud and uh, Microsoft Azure. Some of our certifications are CMMI Level 5, ISO 27001, and 9001. We're an AWS uh Partner Network Advanced Tier Partner. We joined the Amazon Partner Network with their very first training class in November 2009. We launched our cloud practice shortly after that in early 2010. Uh, some of the services that we offer, as I said earlier, application development, anything in the application lifecycle, uh, BI, data warehousing, data lakes, uh, big data services, what uh, Amazon calls data and analytics services today, cloud, enterprise mobility, infrastructure management services, and business process outsourcing. But um, also within the Amazon partner framework, we hold competencies in Oracle, DevOps, and data and analytics. And we're also a managed services provider program uh, member. So we hold all of those competencies within Amazon. Uh, we're happy to have you join us today. And I'm going to turn this over to Shaquille Ahmed, again, our head of cloud operations, and he's going to take you through the uh, AWS system manager. Shaquille. Hey, uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and uh, welcome to AWS Tech Talk. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm Shaquille, heading cloud operations at uh, Cambridge Technologies, and uh, today's session is on uh, hybrid cloud management with AWS uh, Systems Manager. Okay, and uh, so basically uh, my objective uh, is uh, to give you overview of uh, Systems Manager and understanding how you can use it in different uh, use cases and scenarios. Uh, please be hold on to your questions. Uh, we will cover them uh, at the end of the session. And uh, uh, so what you can expect from this session? So uh, we will give you overview of uh, Amazon uh, systems uh, managers capabilities and uh, different components uh, it has. Uh, we will walk you through some of use cases of uh, each component. Uh, I will also break off and uh, uh, show uh, a case study on hybrid cloud management uh, with uh, AWS systems manager. And finally, we will talk about why CT can be the uh, best partner for managing your hybrid cloud environment. And uh, uh, stay tuned. Uh, we will also have a small demo at the end of the session. Uh, so uh, basically, we have been uh, listening to customers, uh, and uh, uh, we have customers come up and speak about uh, how cloud is becoming the new normal. Uh, what's happening is like uh, customers of all sizes, uh, enterprises, and also small size customers uh, are moving to cloud and uh, uh, they are getting advantages and benefits of cloud, uh, like uh, increased agility, lower cost, and uh, uh, instantly global reach. Uh, but uh, uh, there is in uh, 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 basically a refrain, what we have seen uh, uh, our customers also trying to manage the systems that they deploy on uh, AWS. The first step uh, sometimes they take is to uh, basically 
uh, bring the traditional on-premises tools to manage AWS resources. Uh, and uh, uh, they, uh, they also try to do this to create uh, a single management interface to manage uh, on-prem environment and also uh, uh, cloud resources. And what happens is uh, they come up with different challenges. Uh, and uh, uh, many of these uh, uh, traditional tools are not designed to handle dynamic nature of cloud. Uh, and uh, when systems can come uh, and go uh, down with uh, within a matter of minutes, uh, like for example, we have uh, 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 AWS um, uh, auto scaling arrays where uh, systems can start and stop at any given point in time based on the load. Uh, and uh, these tools can't uh, you know keep up with that kind of pace of uh, change. So uh, basically, what happens is. Uh, um, uh, uh, you have to create uh, two different set of systems, uh, a set of system that works with uh, on-prem uh, and, and uh, uh, a different set of tool that works with uh, uh, cloud. And when you, when you do that, you don't get the single interface uh, and you don't get that visibility across uh, hybrid cloud. What also happens is when you try to integrate these tools uh, together, you end up having significant uh, complexity. Uh, and finally, uh, many of these on-prem tools has licensing cost uh, and uh, you kind of having to pay uh, by managed uh, servers. And they can quickly become difficult when you try to manage the servers uh, that doesn't exist for a longer period of time. Uh, like uh, a cluster environment uh, can scale to a few hundreds of servers uh, and uh, can go down in uh, uh, you know, less number of servers once the workload is completed but still you have to uh, have the number of licenses at the max level because your licensing model uh, for the management of the uh, of the servers and, and the resources is uh, uh, by server or the by resource so in summary customers have uh, assured us uh, that managing cloud and hybrid environments using traditional tool set is is very complex and uh, costly so uh, and uh, uh, so basically, uh, that, that's where, uh, so we, we heard that feedback loud and clear, and uh, we, we came up with uh, AWS Systems Manager as a solution to our customers. So in summary, AWS Systems Manager is, is a set of capabilities, and uh, you can see it comes in um, uh, eight different ca uh, capabilities today, and uh, I'm sure AWS is trying to add more capabilities for, uh, for the entire system management. And uh, uh, and we will try to uh, deep dive into those uh, each uh, individual capabilities, and uh, it allows you to uh, do ongoing operations and management uh, tasks at scale. Uh, it helps you automate tasks across platforms. So uh, uh, it works uh, uh, on both Windows and Linux platforms. It works on cloud and also on prem. So basically, the the nature of this entire AWS systems management is is hybrid in nature. Uh, and finally, on cost equations, uh, 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 it doesn't cost anything uh, at all. Uh, and all these capabilities and all these uh, uh, tools uh, are uh, free of charge and uh, you only pay for the resources what you use, uh, irrespective of uh, you know, the, uh, the scale you have. Uh, like for example, uh, you, you can grow from uh, 50 servers to even 500 servers and uh, uh, you don't care about uh, or you don't worry about uh, AWS Systems Manager uh, uh, backend management. So uh, AWS does it automatically for you and that's like uh, free of charge. So uh, uh, let, let's get into individual tools here. Uh, the, the first tool, what we're talking about here is a uh, resource group uh, and, uh, uh, and inside dashboards, uh, we have inventory management system uh, we have automation, uh, we have run command, uh, we have patch manager, uh, we have maintenance window, and we have a state manager, and uh, uh, we have parameter store. Uh, there is another new uh, uh, systems manager tool came in, that is a session manager, which I will be showing you in the uh, coming up slides. So basically how it works, uh, uh, you know, all these uh, tools and integration, it's, it's a very simple. So what it does is uh, uh, it shortens the time to detect the problems uh, and it is uh, very easy to use automation. 
and uh, it improves uh, uh, visibility and control of the entire infrastructure uh, and it manages hybrid environments so uh, basically we, we don't need to uh, uh, you know uh, have two different models or two different tools uh, to manage uh, uh, on-prem and cloud so with, with, within the aws interface you can connect uh, to your on-prem data centers and manage from aws interface so that uh, uh, gives uh, a single uh, interface or a single visibility uh, to the entire system or, or the entire uh, uh, at the enterprise level. And maintaining security and compliance will be easier because uh, you are managing everything from a uh, single interface and, uh, uh, and your, your group of resources can be uh, uh, created uh, uh, and uh, your group of resources can be uh, segregated or slice and dice in the different layers uh, and in different application stacks. So once you create that resource groups, you can visualize that data like in terms of, you know, how many production servers I'm running in this uh, respective region or how many uh, dev I have or how many test environments I have. Uh, and I can view operational data by resource group and uh, uh, once I have that uh, visualization in terms of compliance, in terms of uh, uh, inventory uh, and in terms of uh, uh, security, uh, then I can take appropriate actions. Uh, that's where I can respond to insights and automate operational actions uh, across uh, resource groups. So uh, this is a very simple way of handling uh, the, the hybrid environment at scale. So let's, uh, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, individual component here. So this is resource group. So AWS resource groups are uh, basically defined uh, 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 building blocks of application stack. So basically you define your application stack or, or the entire uh, infrastructure into different groups. So this is a general practice what we do when we have the systems. And uh, 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 the beauty of uh, uh, AWS systems manager is uh, you don't need to create or uh, uh, do anything and uh, you you already have your tagging system in place then your your resource groups are ready so all, all, <clears throat> excuse me so all you have to do is uh, uh, you have to tag your uh, uh, basically query the tag and create a resource group so you, that is uh, uh, you know as as easy as that and uh, uh, you, you can find your tags uh, in AWS resources and select it uh, to respective regions and create the groups. And uh, uh, you can also create group uh, based on tag queries and uh, you can view resource group uh, with the specific insights. You can create dashboard on, on a specific resource group. And uh, uh, you can also have uh, operations run on a uh, resource group. Like for example, you want to uh, uh, make sure uh, a command is run on hundreds of machines or a production or a development environment, you can you can do that from a single click. So that is pretty much possible with, uh, with, with resource grouping. Uh, and uh, this is a simple interface. What you see here, I'm showing a screenshot here of uh, uh, resource group. You create a, a resource a grouping criteria, something like uh, uh, you select the resource group as EC2 systems, and uh, uh, you your tag key and your uh, tag value. Then automatically all the systems with that respective tag are under that uh, respective uh, resource groups. And you can also create groups under groups. So it is more of like a subgroup. So it, it, it helps uh, to uh, uh, basically uh, create more uh, detailed inventory or uh, to, to run a uh, maintenance task uh, in a larger environment. So uh, let, let's come to the insight uh, dashboard. So uh, uh, AWS uh, uh, have uh, gone through this very detail and uh, they have helped us uh, building up uh, 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 basically built-in insight uh, dashboards for us. So inventory uh, is automatically compiled and uh, uh, compliance and uh, 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 CloudWatch dashboards can be uh, viewed directly from here. Uh, if if uh, someone is already using uh, uh, AWS services here, then they know the pain of uh, navigating from uh, uh, different AWS services. Uh, so with uh, AWS Systems Manager, you don't need to do that from a single uh, window or a single interface. You can navigate uh, or you can, you can view data of CloudWatch and also view data of uh, 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 your compliance uh, and, and inventory. 
uh, and uh, basically AWS systems manager automatically aggregates and displays operational data uh, for each resource group and create dashboards automatically. And uh, uh, with systems manager, we can view API call logs uh, and also view AWS CloudTrail logs. And uh, uh, we can also uh, view if there are any configuration changes using AWS config. We can also see software inventory and patch compliance status by resource groups. Uh, and uh, uh, we can also easily integrate the AWS CloudWatch dashboards uh, and also trusted advisor notifications into the uh, into the inside dashboards. And uh, we can also integrate uh, AWS personal health dashboard into this uh, same interface. Uh, and uh, it basically centralizes all relevant operational data. So you can have a clear view of uh, your infrastructure uh, and uh, compliance and also your, your performance metrics. So uh, this is a sample uh, dashboard of what I'm uh, showing you in terms of compliance. Now I can see that you know how many systems are uh, with uh, uh, compliance summary, uh, you know how many systems are with uh, non-compliance and with high risk, and how many systems are with uh, you know compliance in terms of uh, uh, security patches and, and other patches. Okay, so uh, now let's come to the inventory point. So uh, inventory provides visibility into software catalog. So uh, 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 systems manager automatically gathers. Uh, uh, all the details uh, and attributes uh, such as installed applications, so operating system details, uh, AWS components and agents installed, and uh, network configuration of that respective instance, and uh, 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 and all these inventory attributes are stored in AWS config for auditing. Uh, like for example, once the audit, uh, I mean the uh, inventory is run, and you can also rerun the inventory and see that if there are any changes and AWS config can uh, you know, identify through your audit uh, uh, policies. So, uh, and, and that's where you, are, uh, you can assess the compliance of configurations uh, uh, using uh, uh, different AWS config rules. So, and this compliance, you can run it uh, uh, on your own choice. Uh, you, can, you can run it on daily basis or weekly or monthly as per your uh, compliance policy. So this really helps if, if something has have been changed in the system or if any new software or anything have been installed uh, in, the, in the entire enterprise level. In the, in, this is not only in AWS, this is on, on your entire data center fleet. So irrespective of 100 or 1000 servers, we can identify this within no time. And uh, this is a sample uh, 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 screenshot of uh, inventory uh, uh, system here, which identifies uh, what is the top operating systems we have, top applications uh, we have, uh, and uh, server roles and top five services. So we can extend these dashboards and we can create our own uh, inside dashboards here. And uh, automation. So this is very awesome feature uh, and the component of AWS Systems Manager. Uh, and it, it derives from uh, AWS uh, documents. So basically documents are uh, or uh, uh, a, uh, a kind of automation. Uh, and these automation, you can connect to your existing systems, like you have something like Ansible, or you, you have some other uh, uh, automation salt, or some other automation already built in, you can connect to that automation from here. So uh, you, you, uh, you don't need to, uh, um, uh, again, redo all that automation, but you can, you can already plug in what you have. And it, it really simplifies common maintenance activities and deployment tasks. Uh, and it can also uh, update your existing Amazon uh, machine images. It can take uh, snapshots. It can do patch management, update agents, and uh, uh, basically uh, bake applications into your AMIs, build workflows, and uh, accomplish uh, uh, even the complex tasks. Like for example, if one, two, three tasks you are trying to execute and the first one fails and the second, second one you want to stop it if the first one fails. So that kind of capability you can build with automation. And uh, uh, you can also use predefined workflows or build your own workflows here. And uh, coming to the run command here. So run command is, uh, is basically uh, a way of uh, remotely connecting uh, uh, to, to the uh, instances and also virtual machines at scale. So we all know that uh, uh, you know connecting uh, to the cloud environment and also connecting to the on-site uh, on-prem environments is has been a big time challenge respective to the uh, to the key management and the user access and all this stuff and uh, we have to have uh, uh, 
uh, a very key uh, 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 insight in you know what goes into the servers, what commands are executing. So run commands helps us to automate uh, common administrative tasks and uh, all the executed commands uh, uh, can be audited uh, in the cloud trial. And you can have granular level of permissions to control access through uh, AWS IAM uh, policies. And uh, you can execute uh, a single command or a batch of commands on a fleet of servers. Like for example, I want to do something on uh, the, the entire production environment, which is well tested. So I can execute uh, that respective script or a run command. And it goes and checks in all the production machines within no time. And I will get a very detailed uh, report of the output on individual uh, servers. So that way, uh, this, this is a very uh, uh, simple automation that you are executing commands on a mass machines, uh, uh, army of the machines, and, uh, uh, and, and it also gives you an inventory of the output. And we can also, what we can do, we can extend this automation. Uh, we can execute this command and take the output uh, uh, you know, uh, store it to S3 or maybe uh, give the output to a Lambda function and understand, uh, uh, you know, give some intelligence to uh, uh, Lambda and uh, if based on that output, if you want to take another output or if you want to run another uh, run command, that is also possible. So basically, once you have this environment in control, you can, you can play around and you can orchestrate the entire uh, uh, hybrid cloud. And a patch manager, this is very key, uh, uh, important uh, uh, management tool what AWS is providing, and they're also focusing a lot on this uh, uh, key area. So basically it automates the tools that helps you simplify uh, Windows operating systems patch processing, and it also supports Linux. Uh, and we can select the patches uh, you want to deploy. Uh, we can um, uh, basically control the timing of patch rollouts with the help of uh, uh, maintenance uh, window and uh, uh, define approval rules for the patches. And uh, we have the ability to uh, blacklist or whitelist specific patches. Like for example, uh, you don't want to upgrade the kernel for some reason uh, due to application dependency or something and you can block all kernel related uh, um, patches and uh, you can update the rest of them. Uh, and you can also schedule the automatic rollout through maintenance windows. So we have another um, uh, upcoming uh, uh, capability or, or a component uh, uh, which uh, talks about in detail about the maintenance window. So this is a, uh, a sample screenshot which shows uh, the patch baselines. So here AWS uh, helping us uh, to create a uh, patch baseline. They, they already defined a patch baseline for respective operating systems and uh, they, they give us the baseline but again we need not to follow the default baseline we can create our own baseline according to our policies and account according to our application requirements okay so now uh, this is the maintenance window so when we are talking about uh, patch management definitely we are talking about maintenance windows so we can create our own maintenance windows and we can have recurring maintenance windows for that respective uh, uh, patch management and, uh, uh, and basically, uh, we can associate uh, respective instances with defined maintenance windows, uh, and we can create a different maintenance windows for different group of servers. As we know that we already created different groups, so we can define these maintenance windows for respective groups. Like for example, uh, dev systems, I want to do it uh, during my non-business hours, and uh, 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 production, I want to do it only on weekends. So that kind of uh, configuration is uh, is absolutely possible. And it works with uh, uh, Amazon EC2 and also on-premise infrastructures. Uh, this is a cool thing like, you know, we are not only talking about uh, uh, absolute AWS instances, but we are also talking about on-premise uh, data center infrastructure. So uh, this is a, a sample screenshot of um, maintenance window. So uh, we can we can create a, we can provide maintenance window details with uh, name and description, and we can schedule the maintenance window like you know when you want to run it, and uh, we can also have respective approvals <coughs> to uh, to approve this maintenance window. 
Okay, so coming to the state manager. So a state manager is another important um, component where uh, when we are talking about uh, patch management, definitely we are talking about some change, uh, major change at the, at the operating system level. So we know that some configurations may got uh, may change or some some uh, firewall rules or or maybe some antivirus uh, definitions or or there could be anything. So uh, how do we know or how do we make sure my system state is intact? Uh, you know, if I'm doing some changes, that's where the state manager comes in. Uh, state manager controls the configuration details such as antivirus settings, IP tables, et cetera. And you can define your state manager to, uh, uh, to check your state uh, on a individual intervals. Uh, uh, and you can, you can have a scheduler to run your state manager, like you know, every two hours go and check if, if my services are running or not. Every two hours go and check if, if the IP tables are with the right policy or not. So, and, and again, uh, uh, you, can, you can compare actual deployments against a specific configuration policy. Like, you know, you have your configuration policy defined. And uh, uh, if you see uh, state manager has some uh, uh, drift uh, detected, then automatically it can be alerted to you. Then again, you can also query state manager to view uh, status of deployments. Like, for example, you have a fleet of uh, environments and you can see uh, you know what uh, uh, instances are conflicting with your uh, uh, state uh, policy, and uh, this is a sample window where uh, you can uh, uh, you can run your uh, state manager uh, 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 basically tool or or a component. And the state manager is nothing but uh, again a automation or or a shell state or or whatever uh, uh, the automation you have. Uh, you can run this automation against to your uh, state uh, of configuration and you can it can uh, run in cron scheduler or run it for every 30 minutes and give you the uh, results like you know uh, hey state is matching or is there any conflict so that way you can use the same document system or maybe the scripting or a automation system to maintain your state across a uh, 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 hybrid cloud so when we are talking about a state or a configuration, uh, we are not talking about only AWS instances. We are also talking about uh, on-prem servers also. Like imagine we have a fleet of uh, 1,000 servers or 2,000 servers running, and we know that this state need to be maintained or this policy need to be maintained across all platforms. So uh, 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 state manager is the way to go, and it can go and check automatically if any config detects uh, it will uh, it will indicate in the dashboard or it, it can even alert you through sns okay so now uh, when we are talking about connecting to the system so when we are talking about patch management we know we are we are talking about uh, some credentials here so how, how do we connect to these environments uh, when uh, when we require to share our credentials when we're talking about automations uh, there could be requirements where we have to mention our uh, you know very secure passwords uh, in, into these uh, automation scripts so that's where the parameter store comes in uh, it simplifies uh, uh, basically critical information stored uh, uh, securely within uh, aws environment and uh, it is integrated with aws iem aws kms and also cloud trial uh, if, if any changes happens it gives the details and you can reuse across uh, 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 AWS configurations and automation workflows. So once your parameter is created, so you are going to mention only the parameter name, not the actual credentials. And uh, inside AWS automatically picks up that parameter and replaces with your actual credentials. So uh, like for example, what you want to do is, uh, uh, you know, if the CPU is uh, 90% uh, and uh, uh, you want to go back and check and execute uh, some uh, uh, you know, Java threads or, or maybe some slow running query uh, in a database or something. So you can you can trigger a, uh, a Lambda function to connect to your AWS instance and you may need to uh, give your database credentials or any app credentials and that can be stored in parameter and you can safely put that credentials into your uh, uh, Lambda functions.
So uh, this is a, a sample screen uh, of uh, parameter store uh, where you can uh, name the parameter and uh, a description and also uh, value of actual um, uh, password. So this is uh, a highly encrypted environment and it uses uh, uh, a key management system to encrypt your uh, sensitive passwords. Okay, so uh, let's come back here on the session manager. So now what we're talking about uh, uh, different fleet of servers, uh, uh, we are talking about a, a huge army of environment so how do we connect? So oh, I'm sure everybody is aware of Bastion environments, Bastion server, and we know the challenges managing the Bastion and exposing Bastion server to the external world. Uh, and again, uh, you know, make sure uh, uh, only respective IPs are allowed to connect SSH and all that stories. And at the end of the day, our compliance team comes and says, hey, your keys are expired, you know, this is the policy you're supposed to change all these keys for these respective users and that's where we come in hey what is the service keys and what is the user keys which keys are used in what scripts so yeah we know these challenges and that's where uh, uh, you know what aws point to do is uh, you know keyless environment uh, you know why do we even need to generate the keys and expose that uh, you know sensitive ports to the external world uh, that's where the session manager comes in and this is awesome feature. I personally like this feature where you can access your uh, Linux and Windows environment through your browser and you don't need a key. Uh, you know, you can you can directly log into uh, uh, this fleet of instances uh, with your AWS credentials and everything managed internally. So uh, AWS Systems Manager provides a browser-based uh, uh, interactive shell and CLI for managing Windows and Linux uh, uh, instances and uh, no requirement to open inbound ports and uh, uh, like SSH and RDP. Uh, user key management is drastically reduced and uh, uh, use IAM policies to grant instance level access at granular level to the users. And the, uh, the, the good thing is all the commands, uh, what users are executing can be uh, stored in S3 and also can be viewed in Amazon CloudWatch and it can be uh, pushed to AWS Cloud Trial if, if you want to get alerted on a certain command, it can do uh, instantly. So, uh, and as in high level, uh, so we can we can completely get rid of Bastion environment, and uh, our users can directly log into AWS and connect uh, to AWS instances then and there. So they don't need to uh, download any keys or you know have some putty sessions. Uh, to connect to this environment. So uh, this is uh, this is very good uh, uh, option what I see here. And uh, in summary, what we see is uh, AWS uh, uh, Systems Manager is, is a hybrid in nature, uh, is, is cross-platform. It works with uh, different flavors of Linux and, uh, and Windows with different versions. And it is a scalable uh, instantly. You are, you are not managing any AWS uh, uh, basically systems manager uh, platform. It is fully managed by the cloud and it is uh, scalable in nature uh, and it is highly secure. Uh, all the connectivity is happening within the uh, environment and uh, you are not externally exchanging any keys and your, uh, your, your environment is highly securely connected through roles, IAM user access and uh, uh, you know very granular level of policies. <clears throat> and on top of it, you can um, uh, you, you can securely audit your entire environment in terms of uh, command executions and other stuff. And uh, uh, easy to use automation. You want to do something uh, which you already have, and you can utilize uh, within the cloud. You have Ansible. Yes, uh, feel free to bring in that script and execute it from here. If you have salt environment. Yes, feel free to come here and, and uh, integrate it uh, with the AWS Systems Manager. Uh, you want to write your own shell scripts, yes, it's already ready for you. So you, you can do whatever you want and it is very easy to uh, use automation. And uh, 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 basically, uh, uh, the, um, the ultimate thing is uh, total cost of ownership uh, is, is drastically reduced uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, the entire uh, 
systems management. So, so right now you're not paying anything for, for the management standpoint, but you're only paying for the EC2 systems and the AWS services. So uh, that is like a high level in summary, uh, and we will try to understand more in terms of uh, you know uh, a case study, like you know how we help the customer to overcome this challenge. So what 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 the challenge was? What issues we had is managing cloud and hybrid environments using a traditional tool set is complex and costly. That's what we discussed. And uh, traditional IT tool set is not designed and built for hybrid cloud. And uh, maintaining broader enterprise wide visibility uh, is is challenging. You know, its enterprise is very wide, and you have different data centers, different environments. And uh, you know, bringing up together uh, into one interface is a big time challenge. Uh, and deploying and maintaining multiple products uh, is a significant operational overhead. But with the with the help of, uh, and and that was a challenge what we had, and licensing cost, and then the complexity of integrations. So these are uh, like very great challenges what we have uh, to handle this enterprise customer. Uh, uh, coming to this case study, uh, basically uh, our customer uh, basically is, is a is a pet nutrition company in life sciences. They pro, uh, uh, they provide uh, a cat and dog food in the United States. Uh, and and the challenge is what we see here as as the customer business was growing, uh, there was a need to increase the number of servers and uh, in maintaining operational visibility of machine critical applications is vital and uh, city was bought uh, uh, as a uh, prominent aws partner uh, 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 to implement aws solutions uh, not only to implement uh, but but uh, but also to monitor and manage the hybrid cloud environment 24 by 7 so apart from the uh, above requirement there were uh, following challenges that uh, uh, you know high cost uh, multiple management tools were already there and uh, there was lack of consolidated systems uh, and uh, incurring huge operational costs uh, and a lack of technology support uh, like for example uh, you know if we try to do auto scaling kind of environment and our uh, the existing tool doesn't uh, 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 you know fit to that kind of model or they don't they, they are not mature enough to detect the dynamic nature of cloud and uh, uh, the volume of uh, you know volume uh, in in, uh, in terms of size uh, the the business was growing uh, you know the projects was already in a fast uh, 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 running mode and and the uh, uh, high volume of operational tasks it was it was a, a great uh, uh, challenge then in terms of compliance uh, uh, that's again a nightmare where uh, we need to manage the compliance uh, in, in, in a hybrid cloud environment, and uh, we we also need to see multiple operational tools, uh, 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 and getting data from them, and uh, getting into a single visibility in terms of uh, user activity and, uh, and and also caching and other other systems. So we were drastically failing on compliance standpoint. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, given that uh, the different tools and different environments, the complexity is increased a lot. Uh, uh, and uh, between the tools, becoming to manage enterprise level operations. Uh, so uh, th these different tools, they operate in a different mode and they don't provide a unified API to integrate or to digest their data. So that was a very complex uh, activity. Then uh, that's where the city solution came in and. Uh, uh, customer required a centralized operations uh, system to handle uh, hybrid cloud management needs within the budget and the clear licensing. Uh, and the city solution gave 100% real time visibility and control uh, into hybrid cloud uh, operations. And the uh, city solution shortened the time to detect the problems and helped uh, uh, basically implement the easy to use automation. Uh, with hybrid cloud uh, security and compliance uh, in place. And uh, uh, highlights of the projects is like hybrid cloud management with AWS Systems Manager and the, and the key outcomes are, are like improved visibility and control, easy to use automation, and we have really drastically shortened the time to detect the problems. And uh, uh, we could able to uh, securely manage the hybrid cloud environment and also meet the compliance. And we have used a different uh, uh, CT and AWS services. Uh, we are AWS advanced partner 
uh, for managed services and we we have a fleet of aws architects certified architects with us and uh, we have used our cloud operations team uh, data center operations team as it was a hybrid uh, uh, cloud environment and uh, we have a fleet of uh, systems and network architects with us and in terms of uh, design uh, city design and implemented a solution that uses uh, uh, aws systems manager to manage hybrid cloud infrastructure and uh, city solution gave visibility and control uh, of hybrid infrastructure uh, on aws and also on firm solution provided uh, uh, basically a unified user interface to view operational data and uh, allowed to uh, do automation operational tasks across hybrid cloud so we don't have uh, uh, different automation stuff for cloud and a different automation uh, script or a different automation um, uh, methodology for on-prem. So one script can handle both uh, at once. Uh, and uh, uh, with AWS Systems Manager, we could able to create uh, resource groups uh, by application and by application stack. So it, it uh, shortened uh, uh, to detect the problem and also it, uh, it created easy to uh, understand and digest the data in terms of inventory and other stuff. Uh, we also created a uh, uh, VPN tunnel between uh, uh, AWS VPC, uh, Amazon VPC, and also to data center uh, of the enterprise uh, in, in different locations, and we could able to connect to the infrastructure directly. Uh, and uh, uh, coming back to the benefits, uh, uh, the enterprise customer was really uh, uh, happy and uh, is a, uh, uh, and uh, basically customer achieved one unique interface to manage hybrid cloud infrastructure at scale. Now we don't need to uh, worry about uh, the management tool itself, but we can focus on the actual business uh, and uh, uh, no, no worries on, on scaling the uh, infrastructure and uh, improved visibility and control over the hybrid cloud operations. And, uh, uh, and by using AWS Systems Manager, a customer saved licensing cost and consolidated multiple management tools into a single interface, resulting in manage, maintaining security and compliance. And the AWS uh, Systems Manager has one unique uh, interface to manage hybrid cloud infrastructure uh, and, uh, 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 and easy to use automation as well. So uh, basically uh, with, with the overall uh, uh, seamless hybrid cloud operations with automation and uh, seamless security and compliance achieved by integrating uh, uh, AWS Systems Manager. Uh, I could say that AWS Systems Manager is, is a uh, life savior in this, uh, uh, you know, drastically changing uh, and uh, very fast moving uh, hybrid cloud environment. Okay, so uh, uh, let, let's come to uh, city managed uh, services. Uh, basically, uh, we are managed service provider, uh, advanced partner. And why Cambridge Technology is, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, uh, we, uh, we have operational excellence. Uh, uh, we have uh, CT Clock, Clock is Cloud Operations Center. Uh, we manage uh, daily operations end-to-end uh, uh, -end with the uh, uh, ITL process, all of our tools and uh, our engineers. Uh, the fleet is 100% uh, AWS certified and ITL certified. Uh, and we also have a lot of uh, proprietary uh, AI intelligent uh, uh, monitoring and uh, automation systems with us. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, basically, we, we manage uh, infrastructure with the current state in a, in a very secure and uh, quickly recognize and respond to events and uh, uh, enable you to easily request changes uh, based on your needs. Uh, simply put, uh, put like uh, uh, clock manages uh, your uh, uh, AWS operations, so you don't have to. Uh, and it, it also, uh, we also manage uh, data center operations, and you don't have to. So basically, we, we manage the entire hybrid cloud. So with, with a single interface, uh, with, uh, with the help of AWS Systems Manager, uh, and uh, you can focus on your business. And in terms of security and governance, uh, CT provides uh, standardization for deployment, support compliance uh, uh, with your internal policies. We can uh, we can automate your policies. Uh, we can we can uh, we can suggest if there are any uh, recommendations there. And uh, we we are advocacy and support. So basically, uh, you get access to dedicated cloud service delivery manager uh, for each account. 
uh, and uh, as well as all the benefits of enterprise support. So as, as we are advanced partner, uh, you know, once the, the account is uh, uh, reviewed by us, uh, our account is merged into our master account. So you get the enterprise uh, level of support and you get the benefit from AWS that uh, uh, you can even uh, in initiate a chat session uh, with AWS guys. Uh, okay, and uh, you, you can focus on uh, innovation with uh, AWS support and uh, uh, with uh, CTE, uh, you know, being with you. And uh, uh, as Peter was mentioning, uh, CTE is a first company and uh, we are AI enabled, uh, especially on cloud operations. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, uh, IP and AI uh, enabled tools for monitoring and management and operations in cloud. Uh, we, we are also security managed services and we, we also do IoT managed services. Uh, and uh, we are like next gen monitoring. Uh, this is not set by me, but it is set by AWS as we are advanced uh, managed services uh, uh, competency provider. And uh, we also do log management uh, and we, we have anomaly detection within our log management systems. And uh, we do IDSM integrations uh, within uh, within our own service desk or you can, you can come up with your service desk model. And, uh, uh, and 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 we, we are great on DevOps and automation services. We can automate uh, the entire SaaS model, or we can automate uh, the existing uh, uh, models. What you have, we can automate the entire uh, hybrid cloud uh, in terms of operations and uh, management. As as we were mentioning, we follow these five steps uh, of AWS. Uh, in, in terms of resource provisioning, uh, uh, cloud uh, configuration management, monitoring performance, governance and compliance, and uh, resource optimization with the help of a trusted advisor. Uh, and that's what I'm going to mention in my next slide, uh, that is AWS management tools. So we are well versed and uh, these, we use these tools uh, in our day-to-day -day operations and uh, uh, being said, AWS systems manager is, is playing the uh, like a hard role here, so it's, it's a central system where it connects uh, with other tools uh, and Amazon Cloud Watch, it, it does the monitoring for you and the auto scaling arrays, uh, it, it, uh, it, it does the auto scaling for you in terms of uh, EC2 resources uh, and cloud formation, AWS cloud trial for security, uh, audits and other stuff, command line interfaces for automation and AWS config rule. Uh, so we, we use all these uh, uh, respective services, uh, especially on AWS uh, Trusted Advisor. We, we run these uh, different tools on different accounts and we suggest you know, what can be done. And we also highly recommend uh, in terms of cost optimization, in terms of security measurements uh, with the help of Trusted Advisor. Uh, being said, uh, we are enterprise level and we get enterprise grade support from AWS and we also get enterprise level Trusted advisor reports uh, for all of our customers. Okay, I think uh, uh, that's pretty much. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys see a lot of content now. I think uh, time to get into action. So let's see a small demo. Uh, the uh, uh, the demo will be very high level. Uh, I think we can cover a uh, few things at the QS session. Uh, and let's go from here. Okay, so how do we go to AWS Systems Manager? Let's come from the beginning. So what I've done, I've already logged into my AWS account, okay? And I can go to my uh, management tools, okay? and I can click on Systems Manager. Uh, okay, if somebody has already know or used the Systems Manager, uh, let me um, tell you that you can also access the Systems Manager from EC2 uh, 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 Systems uh, uh, Management Console here, but this is like more of uh, uh, deprecating very soon and they have come up with uh, a different interface, uh, which is very uh, new model here. So from here, uh, you can have uh, your uh, insights, you can create your resource groups, uh, you can have your inventory, compliance, automation, and other stuff. 
So I'll try to cover uh, uh, as much as possible and uh, see what we can do here. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, let's create a resource group. Okay. Now, uh, beforehand, what I have done, I have created uh, uh, three different machines here. Okay, and uh, I'm creating a resource group. I'm selecting EC2 instances. Okay, as I told you, we can go by tag. So I'm giving tag as uh, environment. Okay, let me show you what tag I have here. So this is my tags. Okay. And now this is my environment tag. Okay, so now I give this as a tag and I give the tag ID as fraud. Okay, I'm just adding this. Now, what I'm going to do, I can also create group of resources and the group detail. So the group name, what I'm going to do is, I'm in Sydney area, so it's like uh, uh, Sydney fraud group, okay? So this is okay. So now I'm creating uh, this group. That's it. I could able to see one of my instances here, and this belongs to production by environment, and this is. Uh, here now uh, let's go back and see if I could be able to run any automation here I will go to the uh, complaints once I, uh, I I want to uh, basically run some commands and go to compliance so we can see some data there okay so what automation I can run on this group uh, I'm creating trying to execute some automation so as I told you there are uh, already a lot of Automation documents are created. Automation document is nothing but a script uh, uh, or a uh, or a methodology or a uh, basically set of CLI commands to uh, to execute some action. And you can see that there are a lot of uh, automation uh, uh, documents are already provided for general purpose. You can also create your own automation document uh, as a custom document. So uh, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to create uh, a AWS image uh, of my uh, entire group, okay? And uh, I want to target what I want to do here. I want to select my resource group and uh, I don't want no reboot. I don't want to reboot here. And I want to do it on Sydney fraud servers okay and uh, concurrency you can go one by one or you can go a uh, two at a time or three at a time depends on your uh, fleet of servers and you can also error threshold like for example when you're running your automation you can count your errors if you see that okay one error encountered or a, you can also mention in terms of percentages and you can also see your threshold value like you know how how many errors I can withstand and still run this operation or still still run this automation? Okay, and you can you can see one error came, stop the automation, or maybe 50% of errors still you can run the operation. So it depends on the requirement. Okay, so now rest of the uh, stuff is like uh, optional. So I want to execute this uh, automation. Okay, and uh, user input. Okay, you are lucky you are uh, we are getting some error. So the error says missing required parameters instance ID user input. Okay, let's go here. No reboot.
Okay, so let's do this. Um, what I'm trying to do, I'm selecting uh, a, a specific uh, instance here to run this on um, system two. Okay, and let's see if we can run this. Okay, so here the issue, so what we need to do, uh, we need to mention the parameter as Boolean here. So basically uh, the error is I have selected not to reboot. So what I did, uh, the new, no reboot should be true. Okay, so the execution has been initiated. Now we can see that our, uh, basically uh, one of the backup has been initiated. So now you could able to see that. So this is AMI backup is is been uh, initiated and it is in pending state. Okay, so that's very simple to run your automation and uh, automation is is not respective to some uh, already predefined scripts. You can also run this on a fleet of uh, uh, different uh, uh, execution documents and all the documents you can find it here. Uh, and uh, let's come to the run command here. Okay, and uh, I want to run command and I want to uh, run it through a shell script and I'm selecting this. And what I want to know is, um, Basically, if there are any uh, failed security attempts in my secure log, I want to know about it. Okay. And I just mentioned my command there. I selected, uh, I can select it by system or I can select it by tag. For now, I'm going it by system. Okay. And you can also output that log to S3 bucket. Uh, and for now, I have not created this three bucket and you can also shoot it to SNS notification. And you can also see the actual CLI command, what is executing in the back end. So you can take this command and run it or add it to, you, to your document or automation. So I'm running this command. You see that the command is successfully executed. Okay, I can go back here and I can see the output and I see that there are some uh fail attempts here with some ssm user so this is for example no worries and this is interesting uh, item here session manager and uh, we can start a session by selecting one of the uh, instance here and by clicking on start session and awesome so you instantly get uh, the command prompt here and you're into the Linux box. Okay, and this is on the session uh, uh, manager and coming to the patch manager. Uh, patch manager is, uh, is uh, basically a, a little bit uh, a bigger subject uh, and uh, I'm not sure I can cover within this session. Uh, but again, I'll, I'll, I'll try to show you through the maintenance window. What you can do, you can create a maintenance window and you can attach that maintenance window uh, into the patch manager. You can select uh, 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 a respective maintenance window for respective patches. 
okay and uh, as, as you see that you can create a maintenance window you, you can schedule when to happen it okay and uh, uh, as i was mentioning patch manager has its own baseline and you can also select your patches what patches you want to uh, you know add it to your patch group so you can also create your patch groups here okay and uh, coming to the state manager here so this is your state manager uh, you can you can associate respective state managers uh, and again state manager is also your automation as i was mentioning you can run your uh, shell script or something uh, and you can uh, uh, you can automate uh, this state manager to compare whether uh, you know if the, if the session is running or uh, uh, basically if the service is running or any uh, antivirus sub is updated or not so this is very high level uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, this is not uh, 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 in depth but if you are given an opportunity then uh, uh, definitely we will have a very detailed session uh, purely on the technical side but let's come back to the insights uh, let's see in, in terms of compliance so uh, we see that there are three instances running and one uh, is non-compliant in terms of uh, patches uh, and uh, this is the compliance type so in terms of patches it is not compliant so this specific instance is not updated and in terms of inventory Uh, this is like uh, all the inventory we could able to see in terms of top operating systems and uh, category of uh, installed applications and other stuff. Okay, I think we are already running out of time uh, and we are pretty much uh, done with the demo also. Uh, and uh, uh, we see if we have any questions. Actually, we have, uh, thanks Shaquille. Um, we really don't have a lot of time we've run over but let's take um uh, uh a question or two um how does your company become a local msp advanced partner um uh, i i can i can answer that one uh the managed services program has to be um applied for through the amazon partner network you have to be an advanced tier partner and there are Another uh, group of uh, stringent parameters that you have to go through. There's a complete review they do of your entire company and your managed services program. Uh, you go through an audit with uh, Amazon and then you go through a third party audit. And if you uh, pass all of those, then you become part of the managed services program. Um, that stuff can be found on the uh, uh, partner network uh, website. Uh, just we won't get to all the questions, but just so you're aware, uh, we will download all the questions and answer them in a written form and send them out to you. Also, the webinar will be available on a recorded as a recorded version. And lastly, if you do or would like to go through a more complete and uh, deeper dive demo, we'd be happy to take you through that. Um, Shaquille's email is there and uh, you can contact him or contact us once we send out the questions and answers for you. So for right now, I think that covers it from our perspective. Sorry, we didn't have a little more time to answer the questions online, but uh, we'll do that for you and get them out to you the next day or so. I want to thank you for joining us. I uh, hope that you found it informative and enjoyable and we look forward to speaking with you in the, in the near term. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.